If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I want to read two different translations of this verse, and then I want to share with you the word of the Lord this morning. And it is so good to have you joining us today. Matthew 16 and 19, New King James says it this way. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 16, 19, the Amplified Version. I will give you the keys, authority of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, which means forbid, declare to, to be improper or unlawful on earth, will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, permit, declare lawful on earth, will have already been loosed in heaven. Amen. I want to share with you for a few moments this morning on this thought. Living and walking in the authority of God. I want to ask you before we pray. Are you living and walking in the authority of God? If not, that's where you should be. If not, that's the place God is calling you to. Because we as His children have the authority of God in our life. But it goes back to what we were talking about a moment ago. It's all in what you do with it. It's all in how you let it allow it to operate in your life. God has called you to be a child of God with authority, with purpose, and He's called you to be one to stand up and not be afraid to speak the Word of God with boldness and watch God work in your life. Father, I thank you for this time that we have to come together to hear the word of the Lord today. And Lord, I'm asking you now, God, that you would anoint me this day, Lord, to preach the word. Lord, as you have birthed it in my heart and birthed it in my spirit. But I pray, Lord, that you will speak to every heart and every life in this room. And God, let this word, God, let it motivate us. Let it change us. Let it renew us, God. And let it help us to understand who we are. And let it help us to understand the authority and the power that we are meant to operate in. But God, not only that we will understand it, but from this day forward, we will step up in authority and we will step up in power and we will move forth in the name of the Lord. And God, we will see great and mighty things happening because of our obedience in your presence. Now, Father, we thank you for what you are about to do. And we thank you, Lord, for every life that is about to be changed. And we give you glory for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Living and walking in the authority of God. If you've been saved by the grace of God, you possess the authority of all of heaven. And I want you to think about that for a moment. You possess the authority of all of heaven. Jesus said that we have the keys to the kingdom. We have the keys to the kingdom of God. Why? Because we are the children of the Lord. And I want to say this. Keys represent authority. Keys represent the fact that you have the ability to come and to go and that you have the authority to to do something, if you will. I have keys as the pastor of this church that will open every door in this building. Why? Because I have authority in this house as the pastor of this church. And with those keys, I can come and I can go. But I want you to understand, a door is meant as a barrier. But once you possess the key to that door, it is no longer a hindrance in your life. It can no longer stand in your way of where you need to go or what you need to do or what you are called to. 
Amen. So when you understand that you owe the keys to the kingdom, it doesn't matter what door stands before you, you have a key that can unlock that door and bring you into the place that you need to be. We possess the keys of the kingdom. In other words, we have authority to remove the obstacles that will hinder our progress. But on the other hand, we have authority to open new opportunities for advancement in our life. So these keys are very critical. It can remove hindrance and it can open up new opportunities for God's glory in your life. For that reason, I can declare this morning that nothing that the enemy of my life or my soul, nothing that he does can detour me. Nothing he does can slow me down or can cause me to give up on what God has given me. Amen? And I want you to notice why. Because I possess the key of authority. And when I understand that I have the keys of the authority of God, there is nothing the enemy can do that will stand in my way and hinder me from being obedient to the Lord and being pleasing in the sight of God. Notice what the scripture said. The power of heaven binds what I bind. And the power of heaven looses what I lose. So if I bind it, it's bound in heaven. If I loose it, it's loosed in heaven. How, how do I receive this kind of authority and power? The power source comes through Jesus Christ himself. He is the power source behind it. He possesses all authority. And according to Matthew 28 and 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. I want to make something clear up front this morning. Jesus has the authority to command the wind and the waves, and, the, and they will obey his voice. Amen? He has the authority to heal the lame, open blinded eyes, and to stop funeral processions when he so chooses. He has the authority to speak the word, and things will begin to take place. This is the same authority that is made available to you and me as a child of God. We have that same authority. We have that same right. We have that same power, if you will, through Jesus Christ. Our authority is based solely on our relationship with Jesus. And that's why it is so important and so very critical that we keep maintain the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. That we do not allow anything to come between our relationship with Jesus. Why? Because apart from Christ, we're nothing. Apart from Jesus, I'm nothing. Apart from Jesus, you're nothing. Apart from Him, we can't do anything. Why? Because our relationship, because of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we have the authority of His name. We can speak in the name of Jesus, and at the name of Jesus, sickness has to go. At the name of Jesus, demons are, defle are defeated. At the name of Jesus, miracles take place. At the name of Jesus, all manner of things will happen when you speak in in the name of Jesus. But I want you to hear this. Too many Christians never learn that they have been given authority. Too many of God's children never understand that they have this kind of authority in their life. Let me give you a little example here. You can be a millionaire, but if you don't know how to write a check, you can die in poverty. Think about that one for a minute. You can have a million dollars in the bank, but if you don't know how to write a check, if you don't know how to access it, if you don't know how to get to it, you can die in poverty. That's an alarming fact, isn't it? As a Christian that, that never uses God's authority, they have become defeated, they become desperate, and they become despondent. And that's what's happened in so many people today. They never use the authority and the power God has given them. And because of that, they're continually being defeated by the enemy. They're desperate in certain situations. And they become despondent in their walk with God. Let me give you something here. A defeated Christian says this. Every time I take a stand, I get knocked down, so I might as well not get up. That's the thought and the idea of a defeated Christian. But Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 and 14 said, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore. 
You know what that tells me? It tells me I may have faced a defeat somewhere along the way, but here's the deal. The devil may knock me down, but I gotta make the choice of whether I'm gonna stay down or I'm gonna get up. And I decide in the name of Jesus that I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna stand there for in the authority of the Lord and I'm gonna take on the whole armor of God in my life. Oh, somebody hear me this morning. Desperate Christians say this. I'll never live in victory. Desperate Christians say this. I've heard it preached all my life. I see it happening in other people's lives. But as far as I'm concerned, there's no hope for me. That's what desperate Christians say. But I want you to notice they can only quote part of, of Psalm 34 and 19. What they're actually doing, they're only quoting the first part of that verse that says this. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But I want you to understand there's a second part of that verse that comes along with it. The first says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I want you to understand this morning there is hope for your life. There is breakthrough for your life. Everything you need this morning is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let's go back and look at it again. You may have gone through a lot of afflictions, but God wants you to know he is here today to deliver you out of everything that you have walked through. Despondent Christians say this, oh well, Satan's been attacking me. Who hadn't been attacked lately? Who hadn't faced opposition lately? But despondent Christians say, well, he's been on my back. Oh, well, my family is in turmoil. My health is being attacked. I guess it's just inevitable for my life. That's what a despondent Christian says. But the Bible said in Luke 10 and 19, Amplified Version, listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, Satan, and nothing will in any way harm you. You know what that tells me? It tells me that I may have been attacked. It tells me I may have been going through turmoil. My health may have been attacked. All these things may have been attacked but the Bible says I've been given power and I've been given authority over the devil himself over sickness, over disease over infirmity, over the things that have afflicted my life. I have been given authority but I have to be willing to exercise that authority. Amen? But we learn to use, when we learn to use the authority we have been given, we become a destructive force to the enemy's kingdom. When we learn to use the authority we've been given, we become a destructive force against the enemy's kingdom. I like that. And I want you to understand. Notice in Luke 10, 19 again, it tells us we have been given the ability and the exercise to exercise authority over all power of the enemy. That tells me this, that nothing Satan does will succeed. Nothing he does against my life will succeed or will prosper. Nothing he brings against me can overcome me. Remember three things happened when Jesus came into your life. I want you to hear that. Three things happened when Jesus came into your life and you accepted him as your Savior. Number one, all your sins were removed instantly and we were made the righteousness of God. So when Jesus came into our life, all sin was gone and we became the righteousness of the Lord. Number two, the Holy Spirit came into your life. Number three, we were given power and authority enabling us to live life as a child of God. So when you got saved, sin's power and authority was broken off of your life. The Spirit of the Lord came into your life and you were given power and authority to live the life as a child of God. Thank the Lord. And let me just tell you this. It's time that we as God's children, it's time to live like you were meant to live. Live and walk in the authority of God. It's time to live like God designed you to live. I want to give you a little illustration here. I was reading this and it got my attention thought I would share it with you. When Christian Herder was governor of Massachusetts, he was running hard for a second term in office and one day after a busy morning chasing votes and no lunch, he arrived at a church barbecue. It was late afternoon and Herder was famished. As Herder 
moved down the serving line. He held out his plate to the woman serving chicken. She put a piece of chicken on his plate and turned to the next person in line. Excuse me, Governor Herder said. Do you mind if I get another piece of chicken? Sorry, the woman told him. I'm supposed to give one piece of chicken to each person. But I'm starved, the governor said. Sorry, the woman said again. Only one to a customer. Governor Herder was a modest, unassuming man. But he decided that this time he would throw a little weight around. He said, do you know who I am? He said, I am the governor of this state. Do you know who I am? The woman said, I'm the lady in charge of the chicken. Move on, mister. <laughs> and I began to think about that little statement. She was talking to a man of great authority. She was talking to a man with great power. But in her position, she had authority. In her position, she even had authority over him in that moment. And I want you to understand, she understood and she used her authority. It's time to live like you were meant to live. It's time to live and walk in the authority of God like you were designed to walk in. Amen. Understanding and using our authority is the key to seeing miracles happen in our life. And I want to share something with you for just a moment or two here that I want you to hear very closely. One of the least understood and therefore seldom practiced keys of our authority is the fact that healing is under the authority of the believer. Have you ever stopped and thought about that? Healing is under the authority of the believer. Now hear me out this morning. God has already provided his healing power and placed it on the inside of every born again child of God. But it's up to us to release that authority. Look at how Peter and John ministered healing to the lame man. In Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 8, And Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. The night hour and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with, with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, listen to this, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he, looked him by the, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Now, how many times have I read that passage? How many times have you read that passage and, and we think we really understand what that passage means? But I want to point something out very different to you this morning, and you need to hear it. Notice that Peter did not pray for this man. Notice, if you would, that he did not ask God to heal him. Notice what he said. He said, such as I have, give I Thee. He didn't pray for him. He didn't ask God to heal him. He said, what I got, I'm going to give to you. This did not mean Peter was the source of this healing. It was God and God alone in his power that healed this man. But the power that God had given Peter under his authority, Peter had to act on faith. And when he acted on faith, healing came. God gave Peter the authority to act on faith in the name of Jesus. Peter did not ask God to heal him. He believed the Lord had placed his power within him. Now it was Peter's responsibility, listen, to release that power. It had to do with operating in the authority that God had already given him. I want everybody to listen to me close. Notice in Matthew 10, 7 and 8, and it's an amplified version, as you go preaching, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. I like the way he started it out, David. He said, heal the sick. He didn't say lay hands on him. He said, heal the sick. 
He didn't say pray for them. He said heal the sick. Jesus told us to heal the sick in this verse and not to pray for them. Now I'm not taking away from laying hands on the sick and praying over them. I want you to understand something. It's so, we're supposed to lay hands on the sick and we're supposed to pray over them. But as we pray over them, we're supposed to release the authority of the power of healing that God has already put in our life to release so that they will be healed and that they will be delivered. But notice in this verse, Jesus told us to heal the sick, not to pray for the sick. What a radical statement. But these were the exact words of Jesus Christ. And I want to say this, and this is precisely why more people do not see miraculous results in their life today. And I firmly believe that. They're not taking their authority and commanding God's power. They are passively asking God to do what God has already told them to do. They're passively asking God to do what God has already told them to do. Listen, we're constantly told that it's not us, but God who is the healer. And I want you to hear me. I firmly agree with that statement. It is not us, but it is God who is the healer. And I want to make that very clear, but I want you to listen to this. But I also believe that God has placed his healing power under our authority. He is the healer. He is the one who heals, not us. But I believe he has put his healing power under our authority and it's up to us to release that authority. Amen. What does that mean to us, Pastor? If we don't take our authority and become commanders instead of beggars, we will not see the power of God released. Too often, and I've said this a lot of times, too often when to God in prayer. We're almost like beggars. We're begging God to heal. We're begging God to answer. We're begging God. But God doesn't want us to beg Him for anything. We don't have to beg God for anything. We ask God and we believe God. Amen? Give the Lord a hand in here. There needs to be a radical renewing of our thinking on this issue. Let me give you something else here. Peter had people line the streets so that they could just walk through his shadow and be healed. There was people lining up the streets, Robert, just so Peter could walk down through and his shadow fell upon them and through his shadow they were healed. Gene, it wasn't because Jesus was walking down the street. Peter was walking down the street. I want the church to get this this morning. But the same authority and the same power that Jesus Christ held when he walked down the street and he laid hands on people and they were healed, the same power and the same authority was given into the life of Peter. And when he walked down the street, when his shadow fell upon them, they were healed and they were delivered and miracles took place. I want you to look at an amazing verse of Scripture in Isaiah 45 and 11. New King James says it this way. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons. Now listen to this next part. And concerning the work of my hands, you command me. You ever caught that verse? You ever paid attention to that one before? The Amplified Version said this, For the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, its maker, says this, Ask me about the things to come concerning my sons, and give me orders concerning the work of my hands. That sounds strange, doesn't it? To hear God say, Give me orders concerning my hands. What a powerful scripture. But let me just ask you, what does the Lord mean when he tells us to command him? He certainly does not mean that we are mightier than he. He certainly does not mean that we are mightier than he is or more powerful than he is. Or he does not mean that we can order him around. That is not what God intended in that verse. Because we're not mightier than him. We cannot order him around. We cannot tell him what to do. But what he meant here was this. Concerning the things he has already done, he wants us to take our authority and command his power into operation in our life. He wants us to command his power into operation in our life. You see, it's kind of like electricity. Think about this one for a minute. The power company generates power and delivers it to your house. 
They deliver it to your house. It's not your power, but you have control of it. And when you get ready to turn the lights on, you don't call the power company and say, hey, will you turn the lights on? No. But you have the authority to go over to the wall, flip on the switch, and when you do, guess what? The light comes on. Does that mean you are the power source? Certainly not. But what it does mean this. You are the one that's in control of what that power does. You are not the power source. But you got the control to turn the light on and the light off. God sent me by to tell this church this morning. You are not the power source. He is the power source. But you have the authority to turn the light switch on. You have the authority to speak with the name of Jesus. And watch miracles happen in your life and in the lives of others. Why? Because you taking the authority that God has given you in your life. I hope somebody's hearing me this morning. I hope somebody's paying very close attention. That's what the Lord is speaking of here. He has already healed everyone who will ever be healed. Did you hear that? God has already healed everyone who will ever be healed. Some of you are looking at me like, whoa, where'd you get that statement at? Hang with me a minute. He's already healed everyone that will be healed. How do you know? He did it when he bore the stripes upon his back. When he took the stripes upon his back, he already healed every person that will ever be healed. He's done his part, and now it is up to you and me to do our part. We need to take authority that he has given us and become commanders instead of beggars with the authority of God. And, oh God, I feel him. Command healing, command miracles, command deliverance. He's given us that right. Are you hearing me? He has given us that right this morning. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't used to see it this way. I didn't used to believe it this way. But God's helped me to understand a lot of things, Terry Ann. God's opened my eyes to a lot of things. He's helped me to realize some things I never knew before. And I believe because he's allowed me to see these things I've never seen before, we're going to watch people come into this building that are sick in their body and they're going to leave healed. I believe they're going to come in blind and they're going to leave healed. They're going to come in lame and they're going to leave healed. They may even bring them in dead and they walk out leaping, jumping, and rejoicing in the Lord. We don't need to just pray for the sick. We need to heal them in Jesus' name. Stop asking God to do what he's already given you the authority to do. He's already healed. He's already worked the miracle. You still with me? I ain't lost nobody, have I? Listen, God also wants us to understand that we are to live in kingdom authority. Let's shift gears for a minute. He wants us to understand that we are to live in kingdom authority. What, is, what does it mean to live in kingdom authority? Number one, we have to understand the source of kingdom authority. Hear this. The authority comes down from a higher power. Authority comes from above. That's why we say what we say many times. We are under someone's authority. Let me give you a for instance. When a police officer knocks on your door and he says, open up the door in the name of the law, we open it up. Why? Because of the authority that man holds. That police officer tells you to open up the door in the, in, in, in the name of the law. You do it because of the authority that man holds. But let me tell you what's behind it. Behind that policeman is the city. Behind the city is the state militia. Behind the state militia is the National Guard of the United States of America. Incredible authority stands behind that man that stands at your door who is a police officer. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? He has that authority. He has that power because there is a greater power standing behind him, if you would. And likewise, in Christ Jesus, we have been given incredible authority. Why? Because we are united with Jesus in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection, in his ascension, and in his enthronement. We are tied together with Jesus Christ. Amen. And when we begin to understand that and we begin to realize that, it changes everything. Why? Our authority comes from Him. We spread the gospel through His authority. We live our lives as believers through under His authority. The second thing we got to understand is this, the secret of kingdom authority. All authority is linked to obedience. 
And this next statement we need to all understand. You cannot have authority until you get under the authority of that when it is over you. You cannot have the authority I'm talking about this morning until you get under the authority of Jesus Christ. You cannot have the kind of authority I'm speaking of this morning until you get under the authority of God himself. Number three, we have to understand the strength of kingdom, the strength of kingdom authority. Our spiritual strength comes because we are surrendered to Jesus Christ. We are surrendered to the Lord. Hear this statement. Authority differs from power. Authority differs from power. Have you ever thought about that? So often we connect the two together and we automatically put them together. But I want to say that statement one more time. Authority differs from power. Authority comes from the office. Power resides in the person. Authority comes from the office, but power resides in the person. Let me give you an example. I watched a nail-biter football game last night watching Alabama play Ole Miss. I had one guy who was sending text messages back and forth and said, we ain't going to check no blood pressure right now. I'm not sure I would want to check mine right then. But I want you to notice something. Football players, they're big and they're fierce and they have power. But there is a man on that field who doesn't have a jersey. He doesn't have pads. He doesn't have anything like that. He's got a uniform, but he's got something in his hand. It's called a whistle. And that man, he may be a little man. He may not have the power those big men have got, but that man's got authority. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Those football players have got the power. But that referee, he has the authority. He can stop a play. He can send guys to the locker room. He can cause all manner of things to happen on that field. Well, God sent me by to tell this church this morning. Jesus said that we are that guy. Jesus said we may look like many times we are that little guy. But he said, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. God sent me by to tell you we're that man with authority. We're that man with power. And we have all the authority and power that has been given to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our strength comes from His authority. Listen to me. Our strength comes from the, His authority. Never confuse power with authority. Let me give you another very important thing here before I close. Never confuse power with authority. Satan may be able to knock you down. He may have the power to knock you down. But he has absolutely no authority over the believer, the child of God. He may have the power to knock you down. But he has absolutely no authority over you as a believing child of God. On the cross, Jesus deactivated. He dismantled. He disarmed Satan's rule over sin and over death. Jesus dismantled the enemy on the cross at Calvary. So let me say it this way. Satan still has power, but he does not have final authority. I want everybody in this room to say that with me. Satan still has power, but he does not have final authority. Jesus has the authority. Jesus, the Bible said, is exalted above all rule and authority and power and dominion. He is exalted above and beyond all other. Would you stand to your feet all across this room? Satan only has the authority, or, or excuse me, only has the power of your life you give him. He has no authority over you. Satan can only use the power you give him. He has no authority over you. <laughs> Come here, Greg. I'm going to use you again this morning. Stand and look me in the face. You're taller than me. No 
doubt you got a lot of strength. I'm just going to pretend for a moment you're my son, okay? I'm just going to pretend that for a moment. I'm your daddy in this aspect. I may have to look up at you. I may have to look up to see you. I may be shorter. And it may seem like you got the power over me. But there's one thing I got that you don't have. I've got authority. Do you get what I'm saying? If I'm your daddy, you may be taller than me, you may be stronger than me, you may have power over me. But I've got something you don't have. I have authority. And that authority brings the biggest, most powerful to your knees. I want to give you a visual representation of what I'm trying to tell you. And I appreciate Greg helping me. The devil wants you to believe so many times that he's so much bigger than you are. He's so much more powerful than you are. That he overshadows you. And you have to look up to him and supposedly in fear. What the devil does not want you to know is this. I don't care how tall he is. I don't care how big he is. I don't care how bad he makes himself seem. There's one thing I have he don't have. I have authority. And my authority will bring him to his knees. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I want to say this very calmly. He may look so much bigger and so much stronger and so much more powerful than who I am. But Eric, I have authority he does not have. And my authority will bring him to his knees. He has to submit to the authority of God. Listen, he doesn't submit to you or your authority, but he submits to the authority of God that works in your life. He submits to the authority of God that works in your life. Satan has no authority or power over the one who is aligned under the covering of Jesus Christ. I'm going to say that one more time. Satan has no authority or power over the one who is aligned under the covering of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to close it just like this. And I'm going to give the altar call exactly the way God told me to give it. One sentence I will say to you unless God tells me different in the altar. But I want to finish it by saying this. It's time that you told the enemy to take a hike. It's time you told the enemy to get out. It's time you told the enemy to go. Devil, take a hike. How can I do that, Pastor? Because you have kingdom authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. How can I do this? Because you have kingdom authority in the name of Jesus that when you speak that name, every demon has to flee. Now here's the way I give this altar call this morning. If you are ready to operate in your kingdom authority, get out of your seat right now and get out in the front of this room as quickly as you can get here. Get out of your seat right now and get out in the front of this room as quickly as you can get here. If you're ready to operate in your kingdom authority, if you're ready to operate in your kingdom authority, if you're ready to operate in what God spoke to us today, I want to go back and reiterate something to you today. I think we've overlooked what healing is really all about for a long time. I think we've missed what healing is all about for a long time. We keep waiting on God to heal somebody. Robert, he's already healed everybody he's going to heal. He's already healed them when he took every stripe upon his back. They were healed in that moment. But we as the children of God, we've got to take the authority that he has given us and put in us. And we've got to speak with authority. And when we pray for the sick, listen to me. We don't need to lay hands on the sick and ask God to do what he's already told us to do. We need to command the healing power of God to come into their life that they be healed and that they be delivered and that they be made whole. You're not commanding God to do anything. 
You're just commanding the healing power that he's already given you authority over. I hope somebody's hearing me, Ken Clark. You're, you're, you're ta- I don't know any other way to say it. You got to command the healing authority. You got to command healing to come forward through the authority that's been given to you through Jesus Christ. As I was preparing, I was going to preach this message to you last week, but God moved in such a miraculous way. And in this week, even more, as I was preparing and getting ready, God stirred me even more. In this message, James, God has allowed me to see some things in a very different way. And He's allowed me to see how I'm going to pray for people in the future in a very different way. I don't have to ask God to heal them. Him, I don't have to ask God to heal them. I will in just a moment. For they be also to todo bahuya. I don't have to ask God to heal anybody. I just got to command that healing that He's already given to come into operation in their life. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? It's made me look different than how I look at myself. All I got to do is command healing over myself. The healing He's already given. He's given me the authority to release it. He's given you the authority to release it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now that takes us back to the question. Are you ready to operate in your kingdom authority? If you are, I want you to lift your hands all across this altar. I want you to lift your hand all across this room. Come on, lift your hands before God. Come on, open up your heart. Open up your soul. This is a very different altar call. Nobody's got to lay a hand on you. Nobody's got to touch you where you are. But I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus that God is healing, that God is delivering, that God is ministering right now, and God is meeting the need of your life. And let me just encourage you something. If you need healing, if you need a miracle, lay a hand upon your own self and command the healing power of God. Command the healing power power of God that he's already given you authority over to come into your life and to heal you. Peter didn't pray for him. Peter didn't ask God to heal him. He said, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Such as you have, give it to somebody. Give it to yourself. Pray, 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 pray.